92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and soon to be video on RTC Channel 4. Hi again, Scott. Good morning, Tom. Yeah, Scott back in the studio today. What a guy on his twice a week endeavor and mo moving down here to WROI. And of course, job. on your smartphone or Android device, download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you're going. John Alley across the council. So, Good morning. Woodlawn Hospital. Hi, John. Good morning. President, CEO, and all those kinds of titles. Nice to have you with us. Pleasure to be here. I, Thank you. I'm, I'm making a bold prediction today. <laughs> we have a chance for some snow. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, made it okay from Woodlawn downtown to the Window Nation. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, just drive with some common sense and you'll get where you need to go. I think that's a big part. Gary Shriver, when he was in earlier this morning from the county council, was talking about that very same thing. He came over from the Akron area and you know use a little common sense yeah. out there you'll be fine it's uh, yeah roads are slick but you know you're not going to drive like it's middle of summer so give your ample time to get where you need to go plan ahead for your stops uh, especially those of us who drive four-wheel drive we can get going real good <laughs> you can't stop anybody any better than anybody else so just remember that still takes a while to get them everything shut down snow has not affected anything at Woodlawn Hospital no it uh, you know that's one of the things I kind of want to talk a little bit sure. about because you know a lot of times people they, we get these big snows coming the big predictions and you know they they're concerned if they have a family member in the hospital and it was kind of interesting I usually get to work fairly early in the morning and as uh, the day shift folks were coming in probably two-thirds of them were carrying suitcases <laughs> and uh, you know what they they do they say well if it gets so bad that the next group of folks can't make it in we're going to stay. So I mean, that's that dedication the staff has to that patient safety. They just they, they plan ahead. They bring in whatever they need if they have to stay. And a couple of us said, well, I brought two days worth of stuff. So you know, they they we're well prepared for that. Uh, if we lose power, we got our generators that funk. You know, will uh, run all of our essential equipment. I even with the dietary, I say, how are we doing on food? She goes, by 10 o'clock today, when my next truck comes in, I have a two-week supply. So you know, we 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 plan for emergencies and. Uh, have that built into our normal operation so it's we're well prepared um, you know I say it's just amazing to see the amount of staff that come in and said if I gotta stay I'm, I'm prepared and uh, they're willing to make that sacrifice to make sure the patients are taken care of part of the reason Woodlawn has such a high quality rating yes it's you know it, it shows uh, we treat every patient you know their family uh, they're they're here they don't want to be here but uh, you know we just got to make sure that sure. we make a safe environment for them and, and try to get them healed and on their way to recovery as fast as we can. So it, it's, it's really uh, gratifying to notice the dedication of the staff that we have that really goes out of the way. I mean, they're sacrificing time with their family to make sure that our patients are well taken care of. And, uh, and we have a full house. It's, uh, you know, it's usually if we have one or two patients, eh, okay, but um, we got uh, pretty, almost every bed's full today. So, you know, they're gonna be really busy and it's gonna be a burden if, you know, weather does turn much worse which they're kind of predicting. Uh, we're going to have some staff probably going to be doing some 12, 14, maybe some 24-hour shifts. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just dedication. When you, you just nothing else you can say. Board of Trustees in session yesterday. Trustees met yesterday, fairly short meeting, not a lot going on as we're, you know, basically kicking off the year. Got into kind of where we're at financially, and uh, we were used to having a really bad December. We didn't have a bad December, but we had a bad January. So uh, just volumes were down, not a lot of patients in-house. So we had about 9.9 .9 million was our gross revenue. Uh, we wrote off about 5.8 million. So that left, left us an operating revenue of 4.2 million and had operating expenses of 4.4 million. So we did post about a $212,000 loss for the month and it's slightly better. I mean, we predicted a little less than that. So if there's a silver lining, it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be, but still had a loss for the month. So. And we're kind of planned for that as we look, you know, in these early months of the, each year, we know we're going to kind of be in a hole and hope as the year progresses, you know, uh, volume picks up, we're able to make up that deficit and actually get to the plus side. Percentage of write-offs, John? We're, it's gone down a little okay. bit. You know, what we've seen is now with the, the marketplace insurance and HIP2, which has opened up, more people can qualify for that. We have seen a tremendous increase in the amount of folks who used to come in with no insurance. Now they have some insurance. So that's helping with our bad debt write-off and our uh, compassionate care. It's actually going down too. Last year we were probably, I think it was like 12% under budget in those two categories. And that was just for a partial year of coverage. So we're anticipating a full year of coverage this year to really help reduce those write-offs that we see. 
And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice that the folks, we have that ability to help them with that with claim aid in-house now. So if you do try to get enrolled and are having difficulty, come in, make an appointment with the folks there with uh, claim aid, and they help you walk through that whole process to get you hip to or whatever type of insurance you might qualify for. And it's been very beneficial. I bet it has been very beneficial, and hopefully a lot of people are taking advantage of that. They, they keep very busy. We kind of like to track, I mean, it's an independent company. We just basically hire them to come in and do that because they're experts in that field and they've been surprised at the turnout too so they've been much busier than they thought they were going to be which is a good thing okay good uh, other than that uh, just kind of let you know uh, introduce to the board uh, we got Beth Hershberger is a new family nurse practitioner that come on board uh, a couple weeks ago and she's accepting new patients at the Schaefer Medical Center and you know Beth's uh, a nurse has been with us for quite a few years was in surgery continued her education, went on, got her master's degree, and come out now as a nurse practitioner. And It's nice to keep somebody like that in the family. Absolutely. A nice quality employee, got that further education, so if at all possible, we try to retain those folks once they've done that. Keep them in the system so they can keep giving to, you know, back to the organization. So, proud to have her on board. Talk with us a little bit about the difference between a nurse practitioner and a doctor. A nurse practitioner is a, a nurse, an RN, so they've gone there, there four years to get their um, bachelor's degree in nursing and then they go on to get another two two and a half years and it's like a master's program for everybody else so they have a limited amount of prescriptive authority however they are directly supervised by a physician so the state statute says that a physician must review five percent of the charts that a nurse, nurse practitioner does where they've prescribed anything so there's a lot of oversight there and it's kind of what they call a mid-level provider and uh, you know, they do an excellent job of kind of filling the gap because with family practice physicians right now, they're few and far between. And as I, we've talked before, when I talk to the, the students coming out of the medical programs, they all want to be some sort of specialist because more money, less hours, no call. So it, it's, we're using the nurse practitioners, not only us, but everybody, to fill that little gap where we're, you know, we don't have the family practice physicians that we really need. And, you know, they do a really good job. But again, limited scope of what they can do, so that's why they have to have a, a, an MD or a DO to be their supervising physician, and they work very well together. I mean, it's a very good collaborative agreement with those folks, and you know, they spend a lot of time, and a nurse practitioner, if she has a question, usually her collaborating physician is either in the same building or just a phone call away. So they, they, that's kind of how they work, and uh, you know, we've uh, got three or four now, I think maybe more than that, that throughout our system and doing an absolute outstanding job. I mean, they're, they're bright individuals and they fill that little niche that we really need filled. People should not be afraid to use them. Should not be those. afraid to use them, no. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of the person that I wouldn't recommend something if I personally wouldn't want to do it myself. I have, would have no problem going to a nurse practitioner. Uh, Excellent. You know, it, it's just uh, a little different, you know, uh, education. They're not a, an MD. They haven't gone that full route yet. Boy, they're darn close. I mean, they're you know, it's and uh, they they are, it's an intense program they go through. Once they get through that program, they're pretty smart individuals. They really make sure that they know what they're doing. John, I know that uh, we see this on the nightly news every night, but that's the Zika virus. Any discussion at all yet here? Maybe it's too soon, too I premature. Think it's kind of too soon because of again our environment right now. Right. You know, the mosquito issues not here. I'm guessing as we get into the spring and summer. We'll see more of that. I know the State Board of Health is starting to send out bulletins to all the hospitals, medical practices. Here's what to look for. So I think as we start getting into the mosquito season, we'll see more and more of that coming up. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, it's not a disease that you can diagnose real, real quickly. Now, I have heard, uh, and there was a bulletin, uh, and it came, I think, from CDC, that they're close to maybe finding a uh, uh, vaccine for it. So we'll see how that goes, but I think they're getting close on that. But it's you know it's one of those things. I think it's been around forever, but never been an issue. And all of a sudden, it's come to the forefront. So now uh, they're working to get a vaccine. So hopefully by mid next year, we'll have a little more information on that, maybe a vaccine for it. Uh, but yeah, as it develops, State Board of Health does an excellent job keeping the healthcare providers in the state latest and greatest news on that, what to look for. And, uh, you know, so we're just kind of playing it by ear and wait for more information to come out from the State Board of Health. Projects for Woodlawn in 2016? Boy, I, I, I said it before, I'm kind of hoping we have a, <laughs> a relaxing year. So nothing that I'm aware of okay. right now. Um, 
but we never know from an emergent, you know, if we have a piece of equipment that's going to break. So I kind of, we sit down with a lot Sounds of Sounds like a radio business, John. Yeah, you never know what's <laughs> going to break. We, we try to predict, you know, look at an age of equipment and say, okay, maybe this. And I really didn't get a big uh, wish list this from my, my director saying, that, you know, we really got to watch this. One of the things, we, you know, the CT scanner, there was some regulations changed from the federal government. And once we read line for line, word for word, we're actually exempt from that regulation. Uh, now, saying that, yes, we're exempt, but we're probably still going to work toward meeting that. And it, what it is, it's, they're concerned about the amount of radiation that comes out of a CT scanner. And we're pretty proactive in watching how often a CT scan is given. So if you come in, you know, they're going to ask you, when was your last CT scan? Because it, it's quicker than x-ray, but it's a little higher dose. And what they're wanting to do is come with new technology that gives you a, a much lower dose of radiation when you get a CT scan, and it's a software update that goes into the machines. Currently, critical access hospitals like Woodlawn are not required to do that, but to me, <clears throat> to me, if that's an issue, we're going to look into it. Uh, what's good for the patient, that's what we've got to do. So we're still, you know, looking at what it's going to take to upgrade that software, and, you know, you know it was just a software update, how bad it could it be, but it could be up to three, four hundred thousand dollars just to change that software. So it's, it's not cheap software. Uh, which I can't understand. It's just plug a USB drive in and just hit enter. Uh, Scott does that all the time. I know. So it's, uh, he's got to explain to me how all this works. But we are looking and saying, is that something we need to do as we move down the road? Are you satisfied with where Woodlawn Hospital is? Are there goals, aspirations? Oh, can never be satisfied. Well, I understand that, but things that, things that I know at one time or, or for the last uh, few times, we've talked about room renovation and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, you know, we're still looking at that moving forward uh, and being very cautious. Um, you know, we've got to wait for what regulations are because we keep hearing there's going to be some changes in regulations on, on rooms. So what's that going to be? And I don't want to get into a project, get two-thirds of the way through it and find out what I'm doing has to be scrapped and start over. So that's kind of back burner right now. Overall, I'm pleased with the operations of the hospital and what direction we're going. Uh, my philosophy and what we, all of our directors are, once you become comfortable, you're falling behind. So we're never comfortable where we are. We're always striving, what can we do better? How can we make it a better experience for the patient? And I think that's the key thing now is you don't want to come to the hospital. You come because you have to. So we want to make sure that can we make that the best experience possible? And we can't always do that. We can't meet everybody's expectations. But that's going to be one of the things as we look to 20, late 2016, 2017, we're hearing part of our reimbursement now is going to be based on patient satisfaction scores. So CMS is going to say, they're going to poll our patients and say, what was your experience at Woodlawn? And that's hard for me because, you know, my perception of what is good service and yours could be two different things. Exactly. And uh, so that's going to be, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how CMS is going to filter that so they don't get the outliers. That Very subjective, really. Very subjective. But we got to work toward that, and what a lot of organizations are now are, are coming up with what's called a chief experience officer, which is that person, and I jokingly say, well, that's the cruise director. <laughs> you know, like on the old love boat, you had Julie right. as the cruise director to right. make sure that your experience was satisfactory. That's right. So we're kind of looking at that. We're, we're, do we need to put a, quote, Julie? into our system as kind of a cruise director. Maybe a Scott. <laughs> no, I've seen you operate, Scott. We don't want to do that. That's definitely out, definitely out of the question. <laughs> so, you know, we even had a little meeting this morning. We bring all of our directors together every week, and we were still talking about that. We need to look at that, you know, patient and family engagement and that chief experience officer. How are we going to accomplish that? And if we're going to do it, I want to do it right, not just put something together and say, yeah, we have a program that, that doesn't work. So, you know, we're going to spend probably a lot of time this year tweaking that, figuring out what do we need to do, because, you know, conceptually, I agree with 100%. It's just how do I put it in place? That's the hard part to, you know, get your perception and Scott's perception, everybody else's. So I'm meeting those because there are, every person has a different perception. We can do the same thing for every patient. We'll get 20 patients. 20 different perceptions. That's the hard part. How soon will that come to pass? We're probably looking 2017, 2018, okay. in which everybody says, well, that's a couple years away. Well, in healthcare, that's pretty darn quick. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we don't switch direction real fast. We're kind of like this big battleship. Once we get going one direction, we're kind of going there, and it takes a while to turn that thing around. So we're going to start now, you know, turning that wheel. What do we need to do so when it's required, we're ready. We've got maybe a few months under our belt we've already been doing it so it's uh, 
you know, second nature. And it's what it needs to be. It's just got to be part of our culture. So we're going to start working on that. John Alex, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, bring us up to date on the board meeting yesterday and also happenings at the hospital. Anything else you'd like to pass along? Just uh, definitely today, if you're out and about, be very careful. Roads are, are slick. They're going to be that way for a couple of days. Give yourself extra time. Uh, you know, as I said before, we don't want to meet by accident. Exactly. So, uh, you know, come visit us, but we just assume you come in on a friendly basis and not in the back of an ambulance. So just be careful today. John Alley, thanks very much. Thank you.